As Africa's leading defense news portal, the Defense Web aims to give you the latest updates on African defense, the South African National Defense Force, and the defense industry. In this week's edition, South Africa is in conversation with Mozambique on Operation Copper Patrols, Sariti Commission judges could face misconduct charges, and Delos Bait Bridge Fence takes more flack. In SANDF news, Schalke will leave as longest serving SANDF chief. The SANDF is fighting abalone poaching in the Overstrand, and soldiers recover three vehicles worth 900,000 Rand. In industry news, DCD and SHIP showcase an innovative amphibious vehicle. Arms Corps is looking to foreign countries and government agencies for income. SVR's Armored Guard House is proven in action. The Aerospace and Defense Master Plan highlights projects that could stabilize the defense industry. Denol's decay is to be taken up in Parliament, and Denol Land Systems is unable to pay May 2021 salaries. In African defense news, South Africa in conversation with Mozambique on Operation Copper. Parliament's Joint Standing Committee on Defence, JSCD, heard the South African military prompted a conversation with Mozambique as regards the modus operandi and execution of the regional anti-piracy tasking, Operation Copper. In what a committee member termed a masterstroke of understatements, given the volatile situation in northern Mozambique, where beheadings, widespread intimidation, and the capture of villages, towns, and ports are common, the briefing points to a reconsideration of the operations in the existing mandate of the Southern African Development Community, SADC, and anti-piracy initiative. While no mention is made in the briefing of any outcome from the South Africa slash Mozambique conversation, the Operation Copper mandate could change depending on what steps the regional bloc decides to take, if any, to assist Mozambique in stemming Islamist violence in its Capilogado province. While no date has yet been set for the delayed Sadak Trioka plus Mozambique summit, this meeting is expected to decide whether or not to offer military assistance to Mozambique. Unconfirmed reports have it the SADAC plans to send a force to Mozambique. It will reportedly comprise three light infantry battalions, each 620 strong, and two 70 strong special forces squadrons as the vanguard of a regional bloc force to combat and neutralize insurgents in northern Mozambique. An unnamed number of attack and other helicopters, as well as patrol ships, a submarine, and a maritime aircraft to patrol the Capo Delgado coast will also be part of the force. The maritime component of the deployment is reported to lead to intercept supplies for the insurgents and combat criminal trafficking believed to be the source of financing for the insurgency. Sariti Commission judges could face misconduct charges. The outcome of the Sariti Commission appointed by former President Jacob Zuma in 2011 to investigate possible fraud, corruption, impropriety or irregularity in the Strategic Defence Procurement Package or arms deal could see criminal misconduct charges brought against judges Willy Sariti and Hendrik Musi. The commission was widely criticized when reporting no evidence of fraud, corruption, or other criminal wrongdoing in the acquisition of fighter jets, fighter trainers, light utility helicopters, frigates, and submarine for the SA Air Force and Navy. The possibility of misconduct charges stems from investigations done by non-profit organizations, Shadow World Investigations, and Open Secrets. This resulted in a complaint to the Judicial Conduct Committee of the Judicial Service Commission. More flack for Delil's Bait Bridge fence. Public Works and Infrastructure Minister Patricia Delil stated intent when announcing a multi-million rand upgrade of fencing adjacent to the Bait Bridge port of entry was to assist in preventing the spread of COVID-19. That it backfired spectacularly was again brought to the fore by Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts in mid-May. All manner of investigations for scapegoats was launched in the wake of first the 40 kilometer of upgraded fence being breached with ease within days of completion, and secondly, the exorbitant cost for it, in excess of 40 million rand. Following a Department of Public Works and Infrastructure DPWR briefing on the 11th of May, the Standing Committee on Public Accounts said it is not pleased with the slow pace of investigations and consequence management in this manner, and that it will ask law enforcement agencies for progress. The committee will also request a report from National Treasury on the request sent to it by the department to blacklist and monitor the principal agent and contractor from doing business with the government. In SANDF news, lack of progress on defense projects questioned. Democratic Alliance Shadow Minister for Defense and Military Veterans, Gubis Moreau, has questioned the lack of progress on South African National Defense Force projects, maintenance, and the financial wherewithal to do these. He asked why it is there is no effective progress on essential defense issues, giving four examples. These are the SA Army's new badge 
Badger Infantry Combat Vehicle, late a non-payment for SA National Defence Force services to government departments, insufficient funding for the SA Navy's new inshore patrol vessels, and what, if anything, is going to be done as far as utilisation and maintenance of the new inshore patrol vessels and the new hydrographic survey vessel. No progress was reported on the project to have faced them. The significantly behind schedule acquisition of over 200 new infantry fighting vehicles from Denel Land Systems to partially replace the Rattel. In the Department of Defence 2020-2021 fourth quarter budgetary review and the recommendation report, Moraes notes the report's comments on who have them are not positive, adding funding remains a mystery. Seven government departments, according to the budgetary review and recommendation report, owe the Department of Defence unspecified amounts of money for work done. They are Justice and Correctional Service, SA Police Service and SA Revenue Service for Veterinary Services, Health for Medical Assistance and Patient Transfer at three sites, Military Veterans for Medical Assistance, National Treasury for Medical Treatment of Military Pension Officers, and Public Works and Infrastructure for Bridge Building. A bemused morass has submitted a written parliamentary question in the hope of casting some light on how the situation has been allowed to arise. The Budgetary Review and Recommendation Report indicates Project Bureau for new inshore patrol vessels is not sufficiently funded to honour current contractual obligations, while noting progress was made with allocating funding for 2020-2021, which is insufficient to sustain the also under construction hydrographic survey vessel. Schalke, leaving as long as serving SANDF chief. When General Soli Schalke hands the symbolic instrument of command to his successor on the 28th of May, he leaves the office of SA National Defence Force chief as its longest serving occupant. He took office on the 2nd of May 2011, after a stint as SA Army chief that started in 2004, and when he retires, will have been chief of the National Defence Force for just on 10 years. Schalke's successor is currently the top man at the Joint Operations Division, where Lieutenant General Rudzani Mapawanya remains in charge until receiving his fourth star and becoming the only general in the SNDF. Schalke's time as South Africa's top soldier is five years longer than that of South Africa's present ambassador to Mozambique, Sapiwe Nyanda. He was chief of the SNDF from June 1998 to May 2005 and succeeded George Meering, the first National Defence Force chief since 1990. Mearing was SADF chief for just over four years, excluding a six-month stint as then SA Defence Force Chief before the SANDF came into being. Between Nyanda and Schalke, another SA Army General, Godfrey Nguenya, was SANDF chief. He held the post for just short of six years before retiring in May 2011. He, like Nyanda, continued to serve the country and was ambassador to Angola. All SANDF chiefs to date served in the Landward Force, being charged with the responsibility of the most senior position in the National Defence Force. SANDF fighting abalone poaching in the Overstrand. The South African National Defence Force has deployed to the Overstrand region of the Western Cape to combat poaching and related crime in conjunction with local law enforcement and other role players. The SANDF said Joint Tactical Headquarters Western Cape had launched Operation Corona in the Overstrands on the 6th of May, together with the Maritime Reaction Squadron, local law enforcement and Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries. The main goal is to stop the poaching of marine resources and enforcing maritime security. Pre-deployment preparations took place in SA Naval Base Simonstown with Mission Ready training in April, and law enforcement operations began in late April. Many vehicle checkpoints were established throughout the Overstrand region, stopping and searching dozens of vehicles while while staying on the lookout for poachers, suspects and wanted vehicles. A South African Navy submarine was spotted off the coast of Hanspai on 27th of April as part of these efforts. The SANDF said SA Navy divers also launched boats from Hanspai Harbour in support of the land patrols in case they required assistance in getting poachers out of the water. Various assets from the SA Army, including armoured personnel carriers, the SA Air Force, SA Military Health Service and Military Police have been deployed as part of the operation, which is targeting illegal maritime activity from the air, on land and on water. During the patrols in Horston, Schacht Perleman, West Coast Rock Lobster and La Crea Kills were found and two suspects apprehended. Airborne patrol is executed by 22 Squadron situated at Air Force Base Yeisterplatz, which supplied an RX helicopter for the operation. Members from the Maritime Reaction Squadron boarded the RX helicopter to conduct aerial patrols of the area of operation, the SANDF said. Soldiers recovered three vehicles worth 900,000 Rand. Two incidents of soldiers preventing stolen high 
high-end off-road vehicles leaving South Africa give insight into another area of work for personnel deployed on, on border protection, Operation Corona. In the first, soldiers deployed at Madimbo on the South Africa slash Zimbabwe border stopped two vehicles leaving the country. They are identified as a Toyota Fortuna, value 200,000 Rand, and a Nissan, value 250,000 Rand. A second vehicle recovery took place on the South Africa slash Mozambique border, Ndumo, Gate 9, during a foot patrol. Soldiers from 14 SA Infantry Battalion in Batata stopped a Toyota Fortuna but cannot prevent the vehicle's three occupants from escaping. The 450,000 Rand vehicle was stolen in Rustenburg, according to police. And in industry news, DCD and SHERP showcase innovative amphibious vehicle. DCD Protect the Mobility and SHERP International came together outside Heidelberg, south of Johannesburg at the beginning of May to demonstrate the SHERP multi-purpose amphibious vehicle, which is being offered for military, search and rescue, mining, private, and other applications. Applications. Two of the Ukrainian developed Sherp vehicles took and bought a guest for a ride across a farm dam, demonstrating the Sherp's amphibious capabilities. It was originally designed to navigate snow and marshes. Guests included representatives from the South African National Defense Force, South African Police Service Water Wing, Gift to the Givers, Search and Rescue Organizations, and Defense Attaches. Some 50 people attended the first day of the two day event on the 5th of May. The vehicle comes in several variants. The Sherp UTV was the first model produced, followed by the Sherp Pro in 2017. The Sherp R and Sherp Shuttle followed in 2019 and the Sherp N1200. The Sherp Arc adds a 6x6 trailer to the vehicle while the Sherp Shuttle is a boat that can carry and launch two Sherp vehicles. The Sherp Pro can carry six people or more than 1000 kg payload. It has a top speed of 40 kilometers on land and 60 kilometers on water. It can operate in minus 40 to plus 40 degree conditions. The Sherp Arc can carry four people in the main vehicle and 18 in the trailer. DCD Protective Mobility co-hosted the event. As the company is exploring the possibility of becoming a representative for the vehicle. Cornelius Granding, DCD Protective Mobility General Manager, said DCD is looking at the military applications of the vehicle and would like to engage the SA Army's Engineering Corps. Other potential users include mines, ESCOM, and search and rescue organizations. Arms Corps, looking to foreign countries and government agencies for income. State-owned defense and security acquisition agency Arms Corps faces a dwindling income stream due to decreasing defense funding and has identified 15 potential new clients as possible users of its service. The list includes the Command Management Information Systems Division of the SA National Defense Force and the SA Police Service, as well as the fledging Border Management Authority. Arms Corps is, according to a presentation to the Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans, engaging the authority to negotiate a memorandum of understanding as regards commercialization opportunities for surveillance, security, and maritime domain awareness systems for border security. Arms Corps is also making its expertise available to Transnet's National Ports Authority as a possible user of surveillance and security systems. This is also at MOU stage. SVR Armored Guardhouse, proven in action. Special Vehicle Industries, SVR Engineering, which manufactures a range of commercial and military armored vehicles, has expanded into the manufacture of armored guardhouses, and one of those recently saved the life of the guard inside. The armored guardhouse was being rented at a harm value site when attackers fired more than half a dozen rounds at it. The guard inside survived the attack. SVR said it became aware of the need for an armored guardhouse, especially in remote areas, and developed a B6 level protected guardhouse that can survive gunfire up to assault rifle level. The first model was on the market for several years, but SVR has just launched a new model that is easily portable. The small unit can be put up on the back of the truck and has forklift pockets for easy positioning, while the large unit is the same size as a standard small shipping container. Aerospace and Defense Master Plan highlights projects that could stabilize the defense industry. Several projects could contribute in important ways to ensuring the stabilization and survival of the South African defense industry, including an upgraded Royfalk, Utel upgrade, air-to-air -air and surface-to-air missiles, and a SAML replacement. This is according to the 2020 Aerospace and Defense Master Plan, which lists nearly a dozen projects that could be beneficial to the defense industry if they could proceed. The biggest of these is Project Hurfacer for the production of Badger Infantry Combat Vehicles for the SA Army. However, the Master Plan notes the project has been delayed by defense budget cuts and the collapse of VR laser. The delay has caused some subsystems to become obsolete and no longer available. Production of the section variant of the Badger using components on hand could begin immediately at low cost with the production of other variants to follow as their development is completed and funding is available. This would allow the army to equip two battalions with Badger section vehicles, retaining the Rattel in other roles, and ensure the survival of Denal land systems and Denal vehicle systems, the master plan states. The full article and link to the upcoming aerospace and defense master plan webinar 
can be found on our website. The null decay to be taken up with Parliament. The decay of the null has reached a stage where it is affecting combat readiness of especially the SA Air Force, with a call for Parliament's Joint Standing Committee on Defence to urgently investigate. This was Democratic Alliance Shadow Defence and Military Veterans Minister Kurbis Murray's reaction to a SA Air Force letter seeking guidance on providing financial authority approval for payments to the struggling state-owned defence enterprise. Aircraft systems in danger of not remaining airworthy of the C-130BZ Hercules cargo airlift, RX medium transport helicopter and the South African design and built Wayfark combat support rotorcraft. This is according to a letter from Major General Satete Malokoane, SA Air Force Chief Director of Force Development and Support, is concerning for the Air Force in terms of Denel meeting its contractual obligation for product support and maintenance. Denel Land Systems unable to pay May 2021 salaries. Denel Land Systems continued financial and liquidity pressures mean it will again be unable to pay salaries and the division has told employees it will not be able to honor May 2021 salary payments by the 25th due to a lack of cash. In a notice to Denel Land Systems staff dated 14th of May, CEO Nkolisi Makatini stated, we will communicate the salary sliding scale and date of payment for the month of May 2021 payroll as soon as our cash position has improved. All the statutory benefits such as medical aid, den rate, pension contributions, SARS, garnishes, home loans, dispute levies, and union subscriptions are at risk of not being paid, the company warned, and said it will attempt to prioritize the payment of medical aid contributions and the pension risk benefits. Makatini urged all employees to support Denel Land Systems in achieving its sales target, which may lead to an improved cash and financial position. Thanks for listening to the podcast. For the latest leading and trusted news in defense, aerospace, and maritime security, like and subscribe to our social media channels. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and have the latest aerospace, defense, and security developments delivered to your inbox. Stay safe, and we'll see you next week.